Hi, I'm Susan Kennard and welcome to the Spiritual Awakener podcast. This is a podcast where I get to interview really, really interesting people. These people are like you and I. We all have a story. We all have had these moments in our life that have led us to realise that we were so much more than this physical body and this mind. We are a soul having a human experience and every single person that touches our life, whether it's our partner, whether it's our children, whether it's a work colleague, whoever it might be, is there for a really important reason. And I think you're gonna really enjoy my next guest because she talks to you about her spiritual awakening and a really important person that was in her life. So I'm looking forward to having this conversation. Of course, it's always guided by our beautiful teams. And I'm going to introduce you now to my next guest, Louise Hamlin. Louise, welcome to the Spiritual Awakener podcast. Thank you, Susan. And thank you very much for having me on your podcast. I'm <laughs> delighted to be here. You have such a beautiful energy, Louise. <laughs> I love your I love your your happiness and joy that you um so for the purpose of, of the audio, you know, I'm looking at Louise um and you know she's just got a beautiful smile on her face and she looks kind of golden, you know, which is kind of nice because she she observed this beautiful energy. So Louise, thank you um for being here. Um what you know, what led you to kind of want to tell your story? What, you know, what was your spiritual awakening? Okay, well, I mean, it was very sadly grounded in a bereavement. Mm. And I was very, very happily married to my second husband, Patrick. We got married in 2010. And we were both so thrilled that we'd found each other. Mm. You know, sometimes I'd pinch myself because it just seemed such a happily ever after. Yeah. And then very suddenly, this very energetic and vigorous man who was just 71 uh, developed bile duct cancer. When he went to the doctors, he had stage four. He was given three months to live and he died within three months. Wow. Um, I was devastated, totally yeah. and utterly devastated. Mm. And we talked about whether or not there was life after death, because we obviously knew that Patrick, my husband, was dying. And we were both lawyers. And uh, so we were we were quite black and white, really. Quite left brain, like kind of. Yeah. yeah. Although I would say lawyers, you know, lawyers also have this ability to really tap into their true intuition as well, because being a lawyer, you need to be able to see through, you know, what someone's necessarily telling you, right? Well, I guess that's true. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we both agreed that we didn't know. Yes. And, and we both thought that it was unlikely that there was yeah. life after death, but we didn't know for sure. And in fact, Patrick said he wasn't scared of death because it was either nothing, which was nothing to be scared of, or mm. he said, I think if there is something, I think I've led a good enough life, which he had. Yes, so he was so, so he was kind of like his get out clause was, I've been pretty good, you know, I've got this amazing um, woman in my life who, you know, we've had such a beautiful time together, no matter how short it was. And if there isn't anything, then there isn't anything, right? And Absolutely. I've had a good time. Yeah, I love Absolutely. that. It's a really Absolutely. good way to look at it as well, Louise. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, yeah. people, if you're listening to this and you don't believe, and that's okay, I always believe that your belief is your belief. And it's not for anyone to tell you what to believe. And that has to sit right for you, doesn't it, Louise? Oh, um, totally. It's not about someone telling you. Yeah. No, no. Um, mm. I mean, he, he said he was scared of dying. He was scared of the pain mm. of dying. Yeah. Um, but he wasn't scared of death. Anyway, he died. Um, I was devastated, absolutely overwhelmed with grief. Mm. Yeah, I can and, and then what happened was 
he started sending signs. And, <laughs> and to start with, I didn't believe them. Yeah. I mean, and actually to start with, he started sending signs to our friends. Right. And, and they kept on contacting me saying, <laughs> Hey Louise, guess what? And I'm sure it's Patrick. Bloody Blair, bloody Blair. Um, and I think what sort of signs, Louise? What sort of signs? Well, the very first one happened just five days after he had died, mm. and a friend of ours, who is a healer and she's psychic, she apparently on the Saturday morning asked for a sign from Patrick. She was very fond of Patrick oh, um, yeah. and she wanted to know that he was all right. And yeah. she asked him to send her a flame. And she said, not in a fireplace or not on a candle, but I want to see a flame. <laughs> so she thought that was sort of strange enough for yeah, yeah. It, mm. it to be persuasive if it happened. Mm -hmm. And then she said she forgot all about it and went about her day's business. And that evening when she went to draw her sitting room curtains there, out of the window, she saw in the neighbor's garden a tall, thin flame. And she ran and she took a photograph of it, and then the flame subsided. And she sent wow. the photograph to me and she said, Hey, Louise, you know, I don't know whether I should tell you this or not, but here goes. And this is what's yes. happened. And she said, I don't believe in coincidences. I am sure that this was a sign from Patrick saying yeah. that he's okay. Yeah. And of course, I got this and I thought, mm, oh, I don't know. And I do believe in coincidences. So Yeah, sure. And that's a good thing. You know what? It's really good to question yeah, um, yeah. because, you know, I spent, well, you, you listened to my spiritual awakening, but mine's on, if you guys haven't, it's podcast number one, hence why I created this uh, actual podcast. And, you know, I was the scientist as well. I was like, you know, evidence-based and I want to have evidence and I rejected being a medium for a long time after my spiritual awakening. So, you know, it is important to question and to discern and not just be told something. So I love that, Louise. Yeah. Oh, totally. And then uh, another friend um, contacted me about lights which had been turning on when she'd been thinking of Patrick and you know, there was <laughs> nobody there to turn them on. And another friend about feathers. I think what was happening, Susan, was mm. that I was just so engulfed in grief. I know. It yeah. was impossible to reach me. And so yeah. he was doing the next best thing. Was outside and, of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, I love that. I mean, and that's a really good point as well, Louise, is that, you know, because I've been a medium for a very long time. And what the, um, you know, when I channel people and guides and so on what they do say is that they have to be able to blend with our energy okay so they have to be able to blend and they can't blend if we're in this incredible dense grief um of loss because they just have to come in our dreams right I or move something which we're going to talk about but move something in the house you know so they let us know but once we're out of that grief they can blend and really come in and, and, and you know, let us know uh, they're around. I think, I think that's very true. And actually, I mean, I went to see mediums as well. And, um, you know, a, a, a total case of, I think they call it cognitive dissonance. On the one hand... <laughs> That's a word that's been banded around a lot over these last couple of years. <laughs> so on, the one, on, on the one hand, I didn't really believe in an afterlife. I didn't really yeah. believe that yeah. Patrick still existed. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, I was desperately worried about him in case he wasn't okay. And, oh, I, and, I, and I wanted yeah. to make contact. And the first yeah. medium I went to, which was only uh, probably about two weeks or so after he died, yeah. Yeah, I got nowhere with her and she got nowhere with me. Okay. And, and in fact, she got a bit ratty at the end because I kept on saying, well, no, no, um, no, that isn't him. No. And anyway, yeah. very luckily, I didn't leave it at that. And uh, yeah. a few weeks later, I went to see another medium and it was yeah. brilliant and it was amazing. Oh, and I guess my so heartfelt, I, isn't it, when you get that? Well, clarification yeah. yeah and i guess i guess my message to your listeners is you know hmm. if you go to a medium and it just doesn't resonate with you 
don't give up try another medium absolutely and and there's also you know the spiritual churches you know i spent a lot of time working on the platforms giving evidence of survival in on the spiritual churches in london and there's also that as well where where you can go along and you can listen and you don't have to kind of put your hand up or anything you can just listen and listen to the messages you might get one but listen to the messages that others are getting so that you can see that you know this is not this is not not real uh, mm. I, absolutely mm. and anyway gradually i started to get some um mm. signs actually one of the funniest ones i think mm. is a sign that didn't work and just two weeks after his death my very closest friend was coming to stay mm. and um I, just before she arrived, decided that I would ask for a sign because all my friends were getting them. And so <laughs> I, I asked for um, to be given some snowdrops within the next three, oh. three days. Oh. And Patrick had died in February, so, you know, that mm. made sense. And anyway, my best friend turned up and was staying with me, which was lovely, she was very nurturing. And after the three days were up, I said to her, well, you know, I did you tell her though beforehand? Or you didn't tell no, her. No, I had oh, you kept her. it to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, Well, you know, I asked for a sign, I asked for some snowdrops, and they haven't come. I, you know, I don't think there's an afterlife. Mm. And she put her head in her hands and she said, Oh, I feel terrible. <laughs> and, I said, and I said, Why? And she said, Well, on my way to come and stay with you, I stopped off at a farmer's market and there was a stall there selling snowdrops. And I so wanted to buy you some. And I kept on thinking, no, that's ridiculous. Louise is going to have tons of flowers oh, in the house. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And, and she said, I really wanted to, but I just thought it was stupid and I didn't. And she said, Patrick was probably saying, for Goodness God's sake! Yeah. And Just buy the snowdrops. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness! So I thought that was quite funny. Uh, it's an amazing. That's an amazing. Um, I love that synchronicity with that. And you know, if you're listening to this, you know, quite often we we get these thoughts in our mind, and these thoughts might seem silly. But actually, they're very strongly, uh, I call it a GPS for our soul, but, you know, they're very strongly that intuition. And so if you feel, you know, you see a feather or you see a robin, in fact, funny enough, I'm wearing robins today. That wasn't a plan. But, you know, um, robins can quite often be, you know, a symbol of um, somebody coming through and wanting to let you know that they're, <laughs> they're around. So, you know, these, these sort of things do happen. How amazing. Carry on. Exciting. Well, the, the first direct sign that I received from him was a feather on a train. And, yes. and I asked after a few weeks, you know, for another sign. Mm. And um, I asked for a feather on a train because I was going to be getting a couple of trains the next day. Yeah. And, and the next day I got onto the train and it was quite crowded, but there were a couple of empty seats at the far end of the carriage. So I whizzed up and I sat down on one of the seats. Oh, I was very pleased. And I glanced at the other seat and there was a little feather. And I, I thought, love that. And I thought, oh. But then I thought, it's oh, sweet. a coincidence. A coincidence. <laughs> um, and then and there were some problems with lights. But again, you know, oh. Yeah. Yeah, a, a, a few a, things. A, a break in the electricity. I yeah. managed. I managed to find a reason for everything. Yeah, and that's I, good. You know what, Louise? You know, I I'm with you on that, and I think it's good to question, as I've said, you know, throughout this this chat, and it's good to question. You know, so if you're listening to this, we we are not telling you this story, or I'm not telling you mine, and Louise isn't telling you you yours, so that you have to believe it. We are telling you this story because it is an experience that we've both had. And it is, we're two people, this is why I kind of really 
wanted to do on the show is that we're two people that are very scientifically um analytically led and so we're not the kind of people that you know would be ordinarily talking about this you know in our, I call it our previous life movies yeah we wouldn't be talking about this and so you know listen to this because we are definitely people that are you know evidence-based <laughs> so um oh, oh, oh totally yeah, yeah. i mean now when i look back on it i think poor patrick yeah he, I was, he was having to work so hard i was he won't a, mind I was, such, I was such a hard nut to crack and anyway then the whatsapps began yeah and the first whatsapp because your book can i just say um your your books what tell me the title but it's what's up Home. yeah my my book is called whatsapps from heaven whatsapps from heaven I, isn't that the best title <laughs> so yeah and Go it, ahead. it's it's because you know i sub i i in time discovered that patrick could manipulate whatsapp which oh, amazing is amazing mm. but the first yeah. time it happened i was out of the house the house was locked there was no radio on um there was nobody in the house i came back and i found a whole lot of words in the message box ready to send to maria and maria was i think the third medium that i had then contacted and she had certainly seemed to be a bit of a portal for patrick yes. yeah um, yeah when Amazing. when i'd first contacted her there'd been lots mm. and lots of flashing lights and orbs and she'd known she had to see me straight away so anyway um <laughs> uh, and there were all these words in the message box i couldn't really make sense of them some mm. were proper words others weren't but it went on and on and I was about to delete it all. And then I thought, well, actually, I'll, I'll send it to Maria and just see say, what she said. Yeah. Mm. So I did. And I said, no idea how this got here. Really strange. Um, but somehow it did. And what do you think? And she replied saying, no idea. Anyway, the next day, she WhatsApped me back and said, well, Louise, this is what I have found on my phone, ready to send to you. you. <laughs> and wow. It was a shorter paragraph. Not all of the words made sense, but what did make sense three times over was it said, darling, it's me. And Patrick always used to call me darling. And also it said Valentine's Day 2019. And it said lilies. So she said, I did not type this. I just found it on my phone, ready to send to you. I think it must be from Patrick. Wow. And I mean, Louise, that's just a testament to spirit that they can literally do anything. If they're determined and they focus their energy they can contact you and that is so beautiful isn't it it's totally beautiful susan mm. and about 99 percent of me believed that mm. yes he yeah. was he had sent this message yeah and of course one percent of me thought yeah. oh well maybe maria was making it up Ah, uh, um, yes, so there's that, yeah, there's that side of it. Yeah, but you weren't making it up the other way around. No, I hadn't made it up the other way. <laughs> so but, it's um, like, yeah, I know what you mean, though. Yeah, you could say, well, she was maybe thinking that, and yeah, you don't know, yeah, do you? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, and I mean, I had met her, and she was and is a lovely, down-to-earth yeah. yeah. woman. She doesn't do her mediumship for money. She just does it yeah. because she does it pro bono because she yeah, wants amazing. to help, help the wor world. Um, yeah. And I, I thought it was incredibly unlikely that she had mm. made it up. But on the other hand, it also seemed incredibly unlikely that the message was from Patrick. So, yes, yes, yes. I mean, you, know, you wouldn't. So I had, uh, yeah. I had a germ of doubt. Yeah. And um, anyway, she kept on finding further messages on her phone 
um, in the message box to send to me and she kept sent, sent them. And there were things in the messages which she could not have known. Yes, that's when made, you know. Which made sense to me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, but Susan, I was a hard nut to crack. And it wasn't until the August that something happened that then really made me believe. And what happened was this. I was out walking my dog on Tooting Common. Your Spaniel. My Spaniel. I, I was <coughs> staying with my son. Um, I had the phone in my pocket. When I got back to his house, I pulled the phone out of my pocket and my phone told me that I had created at six minutes past 11, two WhatsApp groups, one called Hamlin's, which is my surname, obviously, one called Hamlin Family, all beautifully spelt, correctly spelt, one consisting of Patrick and me, one consisting of Patrick, his daughter and me. And it was actually his daughter's birthday that day. And I looked and looked and looked at the screen of my phone and I knew that I had not created these groups. In fact, I, I wouldn't have known how to create yeah, yeah. a WhatsApp group. <laughs> I, I was knew, laughing. I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew I had not done it. I knew that at six minutes past 11, I'd been walking my dog with the phone in my pocket. And I thought, my goodness me, it must be from Patrick. Mm -hmm. And my son, who's a lawyer uh, and, you know, quite left brained, he spent a long time trying to work out how it could possibly have happened without a yeah. supernatural element. And yeah. in the end, he said to me, do you I know what, mum? It couldn't have. It must yeah. have been Patrick. Wow. So he not only you were awakened, um, but actually he was awakening as yes. well. Yeah. Yes, that's absolutely yeah. true. And yeah. and his daughter, yeah. um, because she then sort of sent me a WhatsApp saying, hey, Louise, have you just created a group with me and daddy? Um, you know, what's happening here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I said, yeah, no. Which it, could be quite disturbing. Like, it could be quite disturbing for someone. Yes, yes. Because they're like, well, why would, is she going off a rocker? You know, is she, you know, this is the thing, Louise, isn't it? It's like, you know, absolutely. They might have thought, "Oh my goodness, she's just like really struggling and wants to include him in everything." You know, you just don't know, do you? No. And yeah. I, mean, I, re I replied to her and said, "No, it was not me. I promise you, it was not me. Wow. Um, it must have been Patrick." And I think that it was a birthday present from him to you to oh. tell you that he's still alive in spirit. Wow. I mean, Louise, you just. You could write it. I was going to say you could write it, but <laughs> you could write it. But it just seems like, you know, something out of a movie, which I think it should be. <laughs> 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 but, you know, you just don't you just don't hear that, do you? You know, it just brings um, um, to mind um, my the father of my children. Uh, he and I, I think the children were quite young at the time when we were in the old house. And I remember sitting on the sofa with him. I'd forgotten about this, actually. You're reminding me. And I remember sitting on the sofa with him. His phone was that side and my phone was that side. And I remember him calling me. We're watching television. Him calling me on his phone to my phone. And he didn't call me. Like his phone was there. And my phone was there. So there was no way that he could have called me. And so we both, because both being mediums, and he was actually a trance medium, we actually just sat and we just went, hang on a minute, what just happened there? <laughs> and so then we were able to sit together and go, okay, who wants to talk to us? <laughs> so it was, it was like, you know, luckily we understood, you know, kind of spirit and we understood what happens. But can you imagine that happening? Like you've got your phone there and the person next to you is calling you. <laughs> and literally they're there. So I'd forgotten about that. So thank you for, for this because it's reminded me. Yeah. Well, Carry on. Well, I mean, I, I carried on getting yeah. um, 
lots of WhatsApps from Patrick. Yeah. And wow. I, I put them in my book. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the last WhatsApp I got from him actually came out, came after I'd written the book and it was being published. And this last WhatsApp said, darling, I can hear you, please hear me. Um, which I found so touching. Oh, it's just... Um, but but he carried on sending yeah. signs as well. And, mm. and the signs he was then sending were not signs to say, hey, I'm here, I'm mm. in spirit, but I'm alive in spirit. Mm. They were signs sending messages. Mm. And give us an example of a message. Well, one day I was playing bridge with three friends. And I don't know if you play bridge or not, but you use two packs of cards mm -hmm. and you <laughs> play the first hand with one pack and then you alternate the packs. So we played the first hand with the red pack. Perfect. Good hand played the second hand with the blue pack. And then for the third hand, we went back to the red pack, which we knew was complete because we'd already played with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And my friend was dealing and she was a card short. So no big deal. We thought she'd missed out. So we all counted our cards to see who had the extra card. Nobody had. So a bit odd. The card must have dropped from the card. Dropped on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we looked on the floor. No card. So we looked on our laps. We stood up. We shook ourselves down. We searched and searched and searched. We could not find the missing card. Wow. And um, somebody said, oh, I bet it's Patrick. I bet it's a heart. So we looked to see what it was. And the missing card was a nine of hearts. Um, and so they said, oh, does that mean something to you? And I said, well, no, the nine seems quite random. I mean, if it the queen of hearts or the ace of hearts. <laughs> but, but or the even the king of hearts. <laughs> but the nine seems very random. Anyway, we searched. We could not find that card. In the end, we had to go and get another pack of cards. Two or three days later, I was telling a friend about this and she does tarot, which mm. I don't do and don't know about. Mm. Normally and I, 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 I do, tarot. but I don't. Yeah, I like tarot for me. I have great girlfriends that do that, but I just work directly with spirit. I don't really use cards for it, but I know that a lot of people do and they're amazing at it. Well, yeah. she said, oh, Louise, she said, the nine of hearts, that's the nine of cups. She said, oh. she said, it's the nicest possible card he could have sent you. Mm. It means the deepest possible enduring love. She oh. said, that's the best card of all in Amazing. the tarot. Mm. And mm. I thought, wow. I thought, wow. It's got my, I think I've got them here. I don't know if I've got them here. No, <laughs> not at hand. As I would have, as I would have found it very, very quickly. But <laughs> oh, wow! It's so um, beautiful. Yeah, and what I thought was extraordinary was, mm. you know, Patrick didn't know anything about where Harry was it. Where you, you found it? Where did you find it? Well, I didn't find it until oh. after the book had been published. I found yeah. I found it over two years after it had been lost. No. Over two years later, it suddenly um, reappeared in the room. And we had searched that room. Yeah. No, we you had, knew it wasn't there. We yeah. had we had spring cleaned the room twice. Yeah. And it's only yeah. a small little room. It's the yeah. a very small little um, yeah. tiny room, which yeah. doesn't have very much furniture in. But we had searched and searched. And then suddenly, after two years, it reappeared. Um, so, yeah. Wow. Uh, but I think what's really interesting is Patrick wouldn't have known how to create a WhatsApp group. He hardly used WhatsApp at all, just a little yeah. bit. He yeah. wouldn't have known about tarot. And he's yeah. learned all these new skills since he's been in spirit <laughs> he's got well he's got all of the he's got all of the help there so he's got you know we we, we call it 
if you're if you're cosmic ordering from here then you can do it from here and call in all the teams you need you know i do that with my members and my soul family it's like call in what you need you know do you need someone to clean your windows do you need someone to help you with your accounts do you need someone to you know clean your house you know that kind of thing so you're calling in your cosmic team to organize it but in a way what he was doing was calling in his team there to assist him to direct energy so that he could actually get those messages to you and i you know i totally get that i totally get it and it is just I mean, you know, the word I'm getting is awe-inspiring, which is not really a word I would say, but I really feel that, you know, especially coming from someone like you that really it took a long time to believe, me too, but it took a long time to believe that actually this had to be something that wasn't, you, you couldn't work it out, yeah? So you had to, you had to agree that this was not from here because yeah. you didn't do it. And there was no way that you, you know, that you would have got anyone else to do it. It's just, you know, so that's when you have to question it, don't you? And that's when you have to say, you know what, actually there is so much more that we don't know. Yeah. But that we're remembering. Oh, Susan. I mean, I obviously have read a, uh, a huge amount mm. with all this happening and I've discovered that there's a lot of evidence out there um, which the mainstream just ignores. My book, my book, my book, Louise, I showed you, this. Let, let me just um, show everybody because you got to read this as well. We got Louise's book. You got to get Louise's book. You got to get my book. <laughs> yeah, I'll show my book. Channel. Put yours up because I can't see yours. Mm -hmm. What's up that's from that's heaven? heaven? Oh, I love yeah. it. I love it. Wow. And the sub the subtitle is Bereavement in the 21st Century. Because I yeah. also I also talk about my experience of bereavement, which yeah. I hope, which I hope that people who are bereaved will find helpful, helpful and maybe consoling. Because yes. I yeah. was looking I was looking for books um written by people who had been bereaved so I could know mm. how my experience sort of tallied with theirs and mm. I found a lot of books written by experts if you like who would talk about the stages of grief but when, yeah but that's not about your... it from the outside in oh. I wanted I wanted somebody who had personally yeah. experienced yeah. it and but you I... needed to do it that's why so you needed yeah. to experience you know and I really believe this Louise that you know we have these spiritual awakenings and these turning points in our life and they are they feel so painful at the time, like, you know, when Martin took his life, that was my spiritual awakening. He was um, a friend, but an ex-boyfriend. So he'd taken his life, he was 34, right? So we have these, you know, these moments, and I was, I was very young, you know, I was in my 20s. <clears throat> and he, you know, we have these moments, don't we, as you did with Patrick, that massively awaken you, but are really, really traumatic at the time. But they allow you then to bring something to the world that is healing for others. So yes. our adversity creates, you know, an opportunity for a door to open for others, not only ourselves, but others. And I think that's how it's always meant to be. Yes. And I mean, I felt very strongly that Patrick mm. wanted me to write the book. Yeah, very strongly. He he wanted others to know. Mm. that spirit survives and what I've discovered talking to other bereaved people is that mm. quite often if I then sort of bring up the issue of signs they will say well yes actually mm. I did have a sign or but I've never told anybody because I didn't want to be thought crazy yeah yeah and so, so you've been you're the acceptable face of crazy for people which you know, I'm joking with you. But basically, people can say Louise didn't believe. She then had all these signs, which she actually analyzed to death, basically, so that she could actually be this, this person that speaks about this story from a place of complete certainty, you know, and that I think is really important for people when they read your book is that they know you've been there, you've done it, you've worn the t shirt. And you've experienced everything, 
that you've, yeah. write, you've written about. Oh, yes. I mean, I, I, I wrote the book from the heart and it is totally and utterly mm. accurate. Yeah. Um, wow. So stunning. And so, Louise, you know, what? how else do you help people? So you've got this book. Um, you must get people wanting to talk to you. So what happens? Okay, so I've... I've created a website, which is mm -hmm. www.louisehamlin.co.uk. And mm -hmm. I invite people to email in and to tell me their stories. And mm -hmm. I've had some lovely, lovely emails. And yeah. I, I do reply to all of them. Oh, um, Louise, so beautiful. And, um, yeah. yeah, and I've started actually... Um, an instagram um <laughs> with called, the help of patrick <laughs> yeah um which i call mm -hmm. hope and it's called hope in bereavement and, hope in bereavement. and yeah. that's just sort of that's let's follow each other to... on instagram then yes you know, most certainly. find you, you no. find my instagram susan kennard one um i'll find louise and have her on mine and then you know yeah that would be great her. that yeah. would be great um, mm. But I, I love it when people mm. email in with yeah. either questions or queries or, or just telling me about their experiences. Mm. And so many people have had things happen and they just haven't been sure whether it was a sign or a coincidence mm. or they were imagining it or it's wishful yeah. thinking. Yeah. Um, what I'm trying to say is, you know, be open to the possibility that it's a sign. Definitely. I mean, I, I, I was in my 20s when mine happened. You know, I was in my 20s. I had like an out of body and all of that stuff, which people can listen to on episode one. But essentially, I remember one thing um, was music. So for Martin and I, music was really important because we used to dance club together in London. And, you know, we used to have a great time in our 20s. And when um, I was getting ready one morning, looking in the mirror, getting ready, my CD, now this ages me, my CD player was just there, like underneath where the mirror was. And I'm getting ready. And obviously I'd had this awakening and the CD player started to play. Okay. And I was like, how did that happen? Because in those days you had to press a button. <laughs> Whereas now people can just like, you know, like, I don't know, voice it, can't they? They can voice things to, to work like Alexa and stuff. But um, in those days, it was literally you had to press a button to start the CD player. And that went off. And that was like, wow, how come this is going off? You know, and these are signs that happen to us all the time. But we might just go about our daily life and not even think about it. You know, reading a article listening to this podcast right reading an article in a magazine a song you know keep being played when you wake up in the morning what does that remind you of a smell of flowers um you know a smell of perfume or aftershave or whatever it might be you know these are things that we perhaps sometimes don't you know we don't observe so it's an opening um that's funny just outside my window is a white feather <laughs> i just went <"Ooh," laughs> as i'm talking about this so that's beautiful and um, it's an opening isn't it louise to open our heart to just really observe and look around us you know so that we can really acknowledge our beautiful family in spirit and our guides as well but our beautiful family in spirit because they're just they're, they're, only, they're only just here. You know, they're just a doorway. They're not even a doorway away from us. They're just a thought away, aren't they? I think, yeah, I think that explains it beautifully. Um, and it has, well, what's happened to me has completely transformed <laughs> my way of thinking and being and feeling. Yeah. And I now know that our souls, our spirits continue after our bodily death. Absolutely. So this, this bodily life is only a, a short bit of the whole. 
which yeah, actually I think is really, really cheering because it yeah. does mean that if you've made mistakes and bad choices in this bodily life, it's not the end of the world because yeah, yeah. <laughs> you will you will carry on in spirit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I mean that's just so beautiful, and you know, and I think um, reincarnation was uh, or incarnation was taken out of the Bible, um, and I think the reason why it was taken out of the Bible was so that um, you know, and, and religion, uh, because it was a good way to control people <laughs> and say like you've only got this chance, right? You've got to do it right this time, or else you go to hell, right? And actually, we know that that isn't true right but it was in the old i'm not religious but it was in the old um you know bibles and testaments before and it was written that you know we yes. came back but that was taken out yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and i think that's just so cool that you know now we're all remembering again yes. and do you believe louise that we've you know we've gone through this incredible awakening over these uh we're recording this on the 17th of november 2022 um but we've gone through an inc unless you've been in a coma you we've begun through an incredible awakening these last you know um two nearly three years where we've had to really look at who are we yes i mean we have lived mm. through very very strange mm. times haven't yeah. we and yeah um and there are challenging times ahead um mm. but it does mean that people have stopped to think yes and, and to wonder about things um yeah. yes and mm. i think there are a whole lot of energies coming in i think i'm inclined to agree with you <laughs> I, you know, I work with the Galactics, um, which I never would have said years ago, but, you know, many years ago, they came in to work with me. And, you know, being the scientist that I am, the spiritual scientist that I am, uh, I was like, well, you know, why are you come, coming in to work with me? And they're like, because the frequencies are raising and we are blending and we're supporting your planet as you live your mission and spread your light in the world. And, you know, we have to just embrace that. Yeah, we have to embrace it or we can stay stuck, you know, we can choose that and some souls will choose that and that's OK, but it, we can't all be the same. But I think this is an opening and this this podcast today, you know, if you're listening to this with Louise and I, this is this is a an opening of the door of your heart to let you think about and consider that you are this incredible being of light you are this soul and you just chose to have a physical jacket as patrick did for a little while you know to let louise know that she was the best thing since sliced bread his queen of hearts that she experienced divine love that they are divine love and they always will be divine love and they'll always be together whether he is the other side of the door and she's this side or whether they are together later on when it's the right time but in that meantime you know that whoever has passed over in your life whether it's due to the recent uh, events in the world or whether it is due to many years ago that you lost someone I actually want you to think about that they are not far away from you and maybe listening to this podcast today, your soul has driven you to listen so that you can open your heart to listen to those on the other side. Louise, thank you so much for being here on The Spiritual Awakener. It has been enlightening. Your book, What's Ups From Heaven, get on Amazon, yeah? And on yes. your website? Yeah, yeah. indeed absolutely and you know if you've got a story of you know grief of losing someone louise's door is open she's freely said that on the podcast please contact her and you know share your story because sometimes just sharing your story helps you to heal that bit more so louise last words before we go well thank you very very much susan and I've really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah. Um, 
And if you're listening to this, I hope that you will find it gives you some hope. Um, I find it immensely consoling to know mm. that I will meet up with Patrick again one day in spirit. Absolutely. Yeah. You've got a bit more mission to do before that. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I actually feel Patrick's here, but I'm not going to talk to him on this podcast. I'm going to close the podcast, say goodbye to everybody. And if you've got a little bit of time, I'm going to see what he's got to say. <laughs> so thank you, um, thank you very very much you're welcome much love everybody thank you for joining us on this episode of the spiritual awakener podcast if you want to hear my awakening story that we've spoken about today it's on episode one you can also read about it in my book awaken the light within your heart where you can also listen to the guides talking to you about healing yourself so much love for now and until the next episode you are loved <laughs>